Good morning, folks. Today we're doing space weather on our own. You'll see what I mean momentarily. We'll also look at the big Morocco quake from last year in a new light and see two papers on the great solar superstorm last month. We begin today with nothing, which is precisely what the official Space Weather Monitoring Service has to offer us today. An unexpected service outage has us without solar flaring, solar wind, proton, magnetometer, and GOES SUVI data. Guess we'll just have to use our eyes. Last 24 hours started off with the southern filament releasing, and after that, one of the most perplexingly quiet days unfolded that one could envision. No solar flaring of note, no significant eruptions, and what's weird about that is we have two sunspots that look like they could throw down in a major way. The northern and southern groups have both developed quite a bit over the last few days, with both size and umbral count. The reason they are stable and steady is their magnetic complexity, or lack thereof. The northern group is well split, pretty much a perfect beta magnetic class setup with no mixing, no gamma or delta class zones. The bigger southern spot has only the most minor gamma delta interactions and is trying to reach that total magnetic split as well, like a middle school dance. We will be watching their continued development as they face Earth tonight. And looking a bit ahead, there are some pretty big plasma filaments incoming, one near the equatorial region turning in, and another on the north cresting the limb. Hopefully Noah wakes back up with some confirmatory data before anything serious happens. Let's go to Morocco, where more than six decades of seismic silence were shattered last September when a magnitude 6.8 rocked the region, taking lives, taking out homes and infrastructure, causing significant ground displacement as well. And a new paper looking at it suggests it was not a normal earthquake. It was a mantle upwelling, heaving upward, banging on the crustal ceiling like a broom of an angry downstairs neighbor. This is what I expect to happen a good bit during the magnetic pole shift and solar micronova induction, but not now, not yet. Moving on to the great solar storm from last month, satellite drag analysis and storm details show that the event was very poorly predicted even one day in advance when the totality of the scenario had left the sun and was on its way here. Honestly, if they don't start factoring in the weakening magnetic field, they're going to keep poorly predicting. Today's top story, the actual effects of that storm on the ionosphere. The southern aurora merged with the equatorial ionization anomaly and electrojet, an unthinkably massive effect that caused the naked eye aurora in New Caledonia, which didn't even happen in the 1859 Carrington event. For the first time ever, a solar storm completely took out the ionosphere at mid-latitudes. That is not a good sign. Our planetary vulnerability is officially concerning in this magnetic pole shift. And where did it happen, by the way? Right where you'd expect, a stride of the South Atlantic magnetic anomaly, the weak point in our field. More good news as always, huh? We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.